Welcome everyone to this session for the Truth From Cafe. I'm Dr. Sally Gray from the Life Mastery Foundation and the Transcendence Academy. And the conversation that we are having today will change the game, will transform your entire experience if you want it to. That's the whole point. Our choice is our power. We choose when we wake up from the illusion of there being anything other than the infinite mind of love that is going on. So today we're going to hit some really profound uh, topics of conversation. There's three things that I want you to walk away with today, knowing how that, that, that you are being stopped from knowing yourself in fulfillment now, because that's what we're here to live, the experience of life from fulfillment, not trying to get anything that's the game of ego. Or my new favorite word is the omni shambles. Ego is the omni shambles. We are here to know the truth of love in omniscience, in omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent truth. That's the life that you're here to live. There's nothing else in truth that's actually going on. So we are going to find out what's in the way, how do I overcome that, and what's the truth of me? Because to say that there is a hero within you is the most epic understatement of all time. The truth of you is omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. The infinite mind of love is the truth of your being, is your very essence. That we see anything else has to mean something. And it's not what we think it means. In fact, we're going to get really clear today about what the game of limitation is and the divine game that's on the table that's here for you to play that your spirit and soul are calling you towards. Living life from fulfillment, not chasing fulfillment, not waiting for fulfillment, not having to do a damn thing for fulfillment. That is always going to be empty because what fills us up, comes from within, is the, is the memory, is the remembering of what it is that we are, is the return to love, the resurrection of the healed mind, so to speak. So what we're facing, what's, what's always in the way is the split mind. And, and I want to get really clear about this. So as usual, there'll be Q&A at the end. For those of you who are here on um, Zoom, and the Facebook community, as well as the hub. We'll open it up for questions in a little while. We'll get into the, the content for now. But I want, to I want to help you to understand something that is very much neuroscience, that is modern science in the dream, in the human dream, that tells us that the brain is a projector. The brain doesn't filter information coming in it projects information going out. And so what it is that we experience is through the dominant filter that even modern science, neuroscience and medical science recognize as the survival brain. The fear center, the amygdala, if you want some, some terminology here, life experience is filtered through the brain, which is inherently limited. Think about it. Survival has some specific requirements. Avoid fear. Avoid danger. Avoid fun, basically. Avoid living, really, is what we're talking about, and head straight to death. Let's have the conversation that no one's having about the trajectory of life. It comes with a very clear program that we all accept when we accept the human survival program that is appearing as birth to parents somehow a life that you're very very fortunate to avoid uh, suffering and sickness because that's just the norm that ends in death that's the human paradigm and we project that belief it's not 
true. It's not anything that we're receiving, we're projecting it through the lens of identity. And if we believe that, we're playing a game that is the human game, that is less than what's possible. There is no hero in, the, in human. There is no hero in human. There is only human. And human is the definition of the individual, the separation from the truth of our inherent, infinite self. There's a whole other identity that is yours to own and know intimately that allows you to live from the space of fulfillment. What do you think fulfillment will and could appear like in your life? Imagine that for a minute. What could it appear like? For a start, there's no problem. There's no problem in the infinite mind. There's no problem in the omniscient, omnipotent and omni, omnipresent truth of you. That is, by definition, all, everything. Human, what appears through the, through the lens of this limited peephole that we look through and believe being eyes, knows nothing but limitation. We see problems everywhere we look, don't we? We see problems left, right and centre in our relationships. Everywhere there is unfulfillment. So think of it this way. We're here to live from the space of fulfillment. Human only knows unfulfillment because human is the problem. Human, the belief in the separate identity, shuts out the infinite mind of love. It is in putting down what I think I know what I think I know in favour of the truth. So I want to share with you how it is that, that you can transcend into the knowing of the infinite self, the self that knows no problems, the self that only knows the oneness, the experience of the self in wholeness, completeness and perfection, the hero within, so to speak. But it's not the typical conversation. There is no hero in the world as such. There is no human in separation that is a hero. There is only the remembering of wholeness in truth, in mind. So I want to hit these three topics so we can open this up to conversation. Because what we're being called to do, if that is what's going on, this appearance of duality, to come back to non-duality or oneness requires action that we're not used to taking, that we're not familiar with. As we've talked about previously, typically when we see a problem, we go about trying to fix it because we believe the problem exists. Whether that's a health issue, whether that's a relationship issue, whether that's a financial issue, fill in the blank issue, human, aka omnishambles, that word and so what we're being called to do first of all is stop believing our thoughts could there be another way to play this game of life one where we could actually win in the way that we're meant to because we're meant to the experience of anything other than supreme happiness is the is the game you play the little game and here's how you break free Stop believing your thoughts. Stop it. <laughs> uh, we joke about this all the time in, in the community, but we, we really want to stop believing our thoughts because if your thoughts are anything other than the truth of supreme happiness, the mind of God, if you will, but not the God of religion, the God of creation, the essence and foundation of life, the very cause of being, the very cause of your being. You're not here because of parents. That's the, that's the superficial game of perspective of humanness. You're far more than that, my friend. And so when we stop believing our thoughts and use life in a different way, we stand to be free. So the first thing that I would encourage you to do is stop believing your thoughts. If you see a problem, you're wrong. Flat out. 
Do you want to know what's really going on? Because you can. There is no problem. What we want to do instead is, is see the problem as the limitation of the paradigm of humanness. The problem is like looking through a speck of dust as a peephole in a universe. The problem is just a belief system that you haven't questioned. And the minute you question it, you start to expand your awareness of the omniscient truth. God consciousness, you might know this as, even though we often have dodgy interpretations with words, God consciousness is the awareness that only love is real. Only love is the truth. Only love is what's really going on. And so what we want to do is to understand that our perspective, the lens through which we're looking, i.e. projecting out onto life, if it's, if it's reflecting back a problem, has intel for us that we're not familiar with. And this is how you can use life to unwind back to your infinite self your divine self, the self that knows I already have everything, I already am everything, I'm fulfilled. I'm just joy, happy. That's the truth of me. I live in this knowing that God is all there is and God is love. We often say God is good, good and more good, which is a bit of an understatement as well. God is everything. God is the very breath of life, the very breath of you, the very essence. And so we're able to unwind back to that. Now, here's where it can get a little bit hairy because we see problems and we might even have done some, some mindset work, which is something that I want to, to throw a big caution out to doing because the peak of human potential is still a limitation. The belief that I can think of a way that is better than the old way is still at the level of, of the problem. Our thinking, if it isn't, if it isn't supreme happiness, and here's another caveat with that, if it's not supreme happiness for me and it's not supreme happiness for you in truth as the oneness, in other words, if it's not supreme happiness for everyone, it's still the omni-shambles of ego in the illusion. It's still not true. So we don't want to do mindset work, which many of, of you, and I know many of you in, in the community are familiar with. Let me think of a better way to look at this. How could I look at this differently? Is not going to produce the experience of fulfillment either because fulfillment isn't possible in separation. I can't be fulfilled without you being fulfilled. That's the knowing that we come to in expansive God consciousness or oneness or non-duality. There are many different names and, and seemingly many paths that all require the same activity. That is to question the, the eyes through which we're looking, to question our very own perspective. So that's the second step. We want to now have a different conversation with life. We want to have a different conversation with what it is we see as a problem because haven't you exhausted? Haven't you exhausted what can be done to fix your problems? What can be done to fix your problems? Well, there's myriad things that we can do. Playing in the, in the circles that I play in, it's, it's like, well, let me become an icon and make a gazillion dollars because that's going to be better than a million dollars, surely. It's let me be more powerful as an individual. We couldn't be walking further away from the truth if we tried. Because the truth is what is the truth here, now, infinitely, eternally, incorruptibly, invulnerably. The truth is love. The truth is perfection, wholeness and completeness, that's what we want to remember because until we know that I am whole, perfect and complete, what's the opposite? I'm empty and need to be filled. I'll fill in the blank for you. And that's the game humans play. I need to do something to fill this hole. Filled it, I need to do something to fill this hole. Filled it, 
I need to do something to fill this hole. Does it sound repetitive to you like Groundhog Day? Because that's what it is. We're here to go, actually, let me sink deeply into the truth because if it's here and now, and it is here and now, and it's mine, and it's everyone's, and it is, I want that. We don't have to, we're not being asked to wait. There's no, there's no miracle moment as such. There's no, okay, well, it's going to, when everything pans out fine, when the timing's right, I just don't have time to do this now would be the most common ego objection to happiness. I don't have time to be happy yet. Once, one I've heard a lot time and time again is when the kids have left home, I'll be happy. When I retire, I'll be happy. When I'm healthy, I'll be happy. When I've got this, this is, the, this is the goal. This is the amount of money I need before I can be happy. When I've got the right husband, try again, I'll be happy. When I've got better kids, I'll be happy. There is no limit to when, the when, the mind that says when this happens, you'll be happy. That's, that's the game that you can never escape because there is no when. There is no when. The third thing that, that leads us to escape. Jessica, I'll come to you in just a minute. The, the third step, which is, oh, the glorious step. I want everyone to know this. Of course, not everyone will, because we all decide when it is that we wake up to the truth, when we're, when we're done trying to do, when we're done trying to think, the world, I have some hope for this world to give me what I want. <laughs> The third step, the, the quickest way to transcendence, and that's what we do in the Life Mastery Incubator is walk directly there. We shatter all paradigms. We don't entertain them. There is no reality to any problem beyond what you want to hang on to, beyond what you want to make matter. You decide what it is that gets your attention. The choice you make will never be denied you, and you see the reflection of that decision everywhere you look. What if you decided to accept the fact that I am one with the infinite mind of love? Accepting the truth of what and who you are. Atonement, as it's referred to in A Course in Miracles, which is the way that we can understand what it is that we've been seeing and what is the truth. But it's not the only way. And it's not a way that you can read about. It's how you, the way that you know this is by experiencing it. If you're waiting, here's another thing we're waiting for, to get this. I don't get this. I don't understand. I don't understand what this. That's, that's an aspect of the collective unconscious that is the human paradigm, the collective unconscious that leads to the belief in my mind being separate from the mind of truth and me wanting to understand the infinite mind ain't ever going to happen. Your mind, which is a speck of, speck of dust in a glorious infinite universe, cannot understand the mystery of love. Doesn't even understand love. We were talking about this in our session earlier and Kel reminded us that that love is an abstract concept to humans because we've got conditions on love, don't we? We've got conditions, sometimes very, very specific conditions. That's love. That's not love. And that's not truth. And so the quickest way to restore the infinite mind which I referred to for some people who are, who are here listening to this and who will hear the replay, I referred to as the hero within. I think I might have undersold it. What do you reckon? The infinite mind of love. The infinite mind of love. Infinite. The infinite mind. What is infinite? Every solution there could be. The vast expanse of truth of joy profound peace, relaxation, health that makes the human version of health look very, very sad, limited by definition, infinite, 
Isn't that the mind that you want to have access to? And as ancient wisdom has said to us, this mind is, is just love. Well, guess what? Quantum science tells the same thing. Physics tells us the same thing. It's just love. Who wouldn't rather have the mind of infinite love running their show versus the mind that is so limited it sees problems? The human mind does problems because that's what it's programmed to do. It's, remember, it's projecting the survival program out onto the world where we look like, here's a me, I need to attack, defend and fight and protect. That's pretty much, there's no game. There's no fun game there. There's no fun game there at all. There is no, I want to sing the song of my spirit and soul, which everyone knows. It's like, I want to live something more than this. And the way we try and get more doesn't work. It's like there's a, there's a very big conversation around at the moment. Turn $300 into $100,000 as if that'll make you happy. Happiness isn't something you need to effort for. Fulfillment isn't something you need to strive for or that you get in doing. It's in remembering that it is your inherent truth. It's, it's fact, in fact, as I said, in stopping believing your own thoughts, in stopping believing the way that you see anything, here's the truth test. Is it perfect happiness? Is it supreme happiness? Is it infinite love? Excellent. I've been seeing things the wrong way. Awesome. Who can be more excited about that? I've just been seeing things the wrong way. It's not the truth. I've just been seeing things the wrong way. Could that be more more of a relief to know. It's not the truth. I see I've got this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. But what I have access to within is the infinite mind of love, is the proverbial hero that has the solution I can't even imagine. So I don't want to, I don't want to use this mind to think my way out of problems. Because Einstein already said that for all of us who care to listen. He said, stop that too. Stop it. Stop trying to solve your problems with the same level of thinking that created them. What that means is stop your own thinking. Stop believing your own thinking. Turns out that, that couldn't be better advice for those of us who want to know the highest love and, and live it. Couldn't be better advice. So what we do is challenge the way we see things. This is, this is the self-loving self-inquiry that so many of you are familiar with that we talk about. That's the purpose of the work that we do is to challenge the way we see anything and everything so that we can open the door that we shut. We've shut the door on the divine mind, on the infinite mind of love by thinking every time you think I know something and you see it as a problem, You've got the door shut on the infinite mind of wisdom and love. When you think you know how, how something's going on and it's not love, hear this. It's an opportunity. I often call this a divine gift. It's like a breadcrumb from spirit, from love, saying you can have as many chances as you like, and indeed we all need many. In fact, many lifetimes for most of us. You can have as many chances as you like to see this differently. Here's a problem. If you look closely, it's no different to the problem you had yesterday and the day before and the day before and the day before and the day before. Perhaps today will be the day you look at this problem and you go, I have a perceptual problem. Well, I get it now. I have a perceptual problem. I have a perceptual problem. I don't need to fix this. I don't need to fix my health, my finances, my husband, my children, my wife, my anything. I have an obstacle that is preventing the light of infinite love from shining through to see the truth. Our thinking mind is like the, the smear of chocolatey fingers on the lens through which we're looking. It's the, it's the dust, the film, the veil of illusion 
that's preventing what's really going on because you could see when your thinking is out of the way, when all of your mental facult faculties are taken out of the equation, what's projected through that you experience? At the level of cause we're talking about, not the level of the conscious thinking mind, because that's the effect. Your thinking mind is the very downstream consequence, the effect of the cause. And when that's out of the way, what comes shining through? Love. Yeah. The infinite mind of love is here to illuminate and animate your experience. The infinite mind. So what that means is where you see a problem, where you see a problem, suddenly it's lit up in a way that is miraculous. That's why we call it a miracle. And you can perform miracles hundreds of times a day. You perform them until you don't need to perform miracles anymore because you live the miracle. You're the living miracle. And you see only healed, happy, whole, complete. That's what's, that, what, that's what's shining through eternally, infinitely in this present moment. It's never going to be dependent on you being, doing or having anything. You are not more worthy then than you are now than you've always been. Knowing your wholeness, living from fulfillment, where, of course, there's, there's no question about what's my purpose? What's the meaning of anything? It just is. It's known. There's no doing required. There's not you repurposing your career, changing country, changing environment at all. You're not being called to go and live in a monastery, unless maybe you are. That's You might be. But you don't need to take yourself out of your environment because the environment is already whole, perfect and complete. What you're seeing is your perspective, which is the game you've decided to play until you wake up to the truth. So waking up to the truth, let me, let me be really clear about this, is, is challenging because the mind has really put in place some terrific and effective constraints that run deep and we're not aware with where of them. I think we're going to be hitting on one in a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'll share your comment in a tick, Jess. Um, these constraints, the collective unconscious, we often refer to them as archetypes. As I've said before, we're not here to understand the archetypes as a way of explaining our littleness. The archetypes were only ever there to understand the inherent limitations of the human paradigm so that we can transcend them. That's what self-transcendence is, getting beyond the self that is part of the dream of I've got to survive. That's, that's not self-transcendence. There is no separation in transcendence. There's only the knowing of oneness, the knowing of yourself in fulfillment because you know that it is the divine mind that illuminates your being. And to surrender more and more deeply into that, as so many of you who are who I can see in the Zoom room and, and in our Facebook and hub communities, surrendering into that is the, is the joyous journey to be more done through by love versus the way you think life has to be done. Done through by love versus the human version of this is what life looks like, then they're not even in the same galaxy. So we don't want to use our mind to think of a better way. We want to use our mind to shatter the paradigm of our own mind. That's how we allow the truth to come in because we don't have a sense of the truth in our thinking mind until our mental faculties are out of the way and we know that that job has been done when we know peace, when that's all it is that we know. I know peace, peace. I know love. God's got this. There's only satisfaction and fulfillment in, in knowing the self as whole and complete. 
And whilst we play the human game, we're actually playing the opposite. I am lacking, I am incomplete, and I need stuff and people and things and everything possible to fill me up and make me feel okay about myself. Damn, it wore off, let me do it again. There is no end game there. There is no, well, once you've once you've got five million dollar clients and you're doing this in the world, and no, no. So let me recap those three things and then we'll hit the um hit some questions. And actually, a really cool comment that I want to share. I'll share Jess's aha. This might land for someone else who's listening. So you'll you'll get this. We want to stop believing our thoughts. We, in fact, want to use them. We want to use them as the, as the starting point of inquiry to shatter them because where we see any challenge, that's only because we're believing the way that we see things. We never question the reality of the problem and that's what we need to do. That's, how, that's the out. That's how we end the game of birth and death. That's how we heal because we're no longer exhausting ourselves. We're no longer exhausting ourselves trying to fix something when in truth there are no problems that require fixing. The truth is whole, perfect and complete. Who doesn't want a slice of that action? <laughs> and the third step is you accept that you're a limited human and you that's the game you play or you accept hang on I'm I'm more than this I am so much more than this I am one with the infinite mind of love love that is an abstract term that I can't possibly know about in humanness because we don't do unconditional love if we're really honest and there's no point not being honest is there but we're not in, but this is not a game of I need to be honest with you about anything to have a conversation. I need to be honest with myself. The game of returning home to love is a game that we play by being honest with ourselves. And you've got everything that you need. You already know. Are you happy? Are you upset? How are you feeling in this moment? Because that's the only intel that you need. There is no requirement on knowing the truth of the infinite self. You don't need to do anything, be anything, have anything. This isn't, this isn't a game rich people play or poor people play. This isn't a game that anyone from a particular background plays. We're here to shatter the paradigms of separation, i.e. the belief in human individual bodies, in order to know perfect love. And that has no requirements. Anyone can do this. And I want to point out that it's not a game smart people play either. You don't have to be smart. You know how you feel. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. So we'll take some questions. I'm going to start with, with Jess, who's had an OMG moment in big capitals several times repeated. I'll, I'll summarise because it's quite a big aha. She says, I get it. I'm not meant to know. That's a truth bomb moment. When you actually get that, not intellectually, but you get that. So there's a difference between information, as I was saying, the, the human likes to play, well, let me just try and understand this. And that's the, that's the decision for ego. It is in saying, I do not need to know. And there's a bit more to that. So, so for those of you who are interested, what Jess has so clearly seen despite doing this work is that the saboteur is the collective unconscious that runs through human awareness. Deep. It's deep. That's why inquiry is the way that we dig our way out or dig our way home by exposing what it is that's actually playing us the saboteur is one of the four collective unconscious programs and patterns that plays you without you even realizing it. The thinking that I need to know is the saboteur and it is actually the, the exact opposite that is the channel to God. That is the channel to the infinite hero mind, the magician we often call it. 
that mind becomes available when we say, I don't need to know. How can a speck of dust know the universe? The truth is it's part of the universe, so it does. But if we look through that speck of dust and remember I'm calling me a speck of dust, when I look through what I think I know, I'm playing a very small game. I'm, I'm playing game of kindy. And it's not, and I don't graduate by thinking about it differently. I stay stuck. There is no mindset work. Let me think about it. Let me just believe. I need to let go of everything about there being any separation so that I can live from that fulfillment with the hero within actually guiding me every step of the way, which is the opposite of human, which is exhaustion. This is relaxation. The most profound and deep, restful peace and relaxation there could possibly be when you know that love is all there is. If love is all there is, love is the only experience that's possible and that be the truth. Mic bomb moment, mic drop moment. All right. So I, I've asked the hub for questions previous, previously. Who hasn't asked a question that would like to ask a question? Let's open it up for, for one or two. Big conversation. Who would like to perhaps share? I know that there's many people in our community who would like to um, perhaps share their experience of going from this state of the limited mind to the look what's available. Look what's available in the limitless, infinite mind. Or is everyone a bit shy? To give is to live. You already know that truth. Who would like to give some love? There's the answer right there. So anyone else have a question? Go ahead, Karen. So that's that. I just, while I was listening to you, there was all sorts of things going on in the background for me. I was trying to just concentrate on this because I just think it's gold and I'm sucking it all in and I am going to join your transcendence group. There's all this stuff going in the background and I can't hear you. I just want you to explain to me from your perspective how you would deal with this on this mental level that you're trying to get through to us. I asked my family if they could be a bit quieter and their response was, just put yourself on mute. And I said to them, it's not that Sally can hear me, I'm trying to hear Sally. And then they were getting all sort of huffety. So I ended up, I don't really noticed, I've picked up my laptop and I've walked upstairs and I can just feel this, I don't know, this feeling welling up inside me thinking, oh, I don't know what I was thinking, just upset. So I've come upstairs and I'm in peace and quiet and I'm able to listen to you. And I'm thinking to myself, so how would Sally deal with this? What would you be saying? So as an example, to deal with these, it's not a problem, but it, do, you know, do you know what I'm trying to say? Sure do, let's hit that. Thanks, Karen, I'm just popping you on, on mute. This is gold, this is brilliant. So. This is the, the very experience of life that, that we know as this is what's real for me. This is real. This is great. We're not here to deny what's coming up, what's arising in this moment ever. We use it. We use it to walk home. So it's not, well, just look at it differently. Just, just see it differently. Just do something differently. It's arising because we all have a deep desire to go home to the knowing of our wholeness, completeness, innocence, fulfillment, to know ourselves. That's what we're here to do. That's like the, it's like the, the, the little core game directive, go home. And we look, we walk around going, where do I go for that? Let me try this. So when stuff arises, Karen, and it's perfect, it's exactly right. You, you, are in exactly the right place to break free because upset is only possible through 
the mind that is programmed to see upset. So you're onto something here. This is not a question about, well, the family should be more, more thoughtful and caring and I should be smarter not to put myself in this situation. That's redundant thinking. That's human thinking. What we do using this very specific example is to say, I'm upset. It's about me. Everything that shows up in our experience is for us. It's for us. We often think it's against us. It's like, oh, bloody family's against, everything's against me. Just, I just want to be happy. And everything shows up to stop me seemingly. And I'm really upset about it. So what we do is the, the inquiry process. We take all of our upsets. We take the paradigm that I have identified and held on to that produces the upsets, that produces me having the shut door experience of infinite love. So nothing needs to change is, is point number one. Husband, family, no one needs to do anything different. It's almost, it's almost like we just get used to, and I'm sure many people who've all lost their tongues today would, would know this and corroborate this, that I'm just here to know that I'm upset and it's about me, not anyone else. And life as I know it and see it in this upset has to change because the cause of upset is the paradigm that is running you. So we do the inquiry to go, I'm upset. It's about me. What's arising is for me. We often use that, that phrase. In fact, that's, that's one of our core um, reminders. I'm upset. It's about me. I'm upset doesn't exist outside. I'm upset it's not in your family. Look at it that way. They're not upset. You're upset. I'm upset. It's about me. What's, what's in the way is the way. It's not wrong. You're exactly where you're meant to be. I can't think of, it, of more ways to say it, but this moment is the moment where I say I've got a perceptual problem. I'm seeing an upset. It's like we celebrate, don't we, everyone? We, it's, it's now I celebrate the upset because I've decided I want love and I'm now finding out what's stopping me from knowing my wholeness and completeness and healed self. I'm onto something. This is like a golden, what's the most precious thing you could imagine? That still pales in truth. This is a golden opportunity. I'm upset. It's about me. Let me look within. Let me, let me discover because this is where you go boom, boom, boom with inquiry to find the deep belief, not I'm not enough, I'm not worthy and I'm not lovable, which is all very superficial. That's why no one that follows that kind of hypnosis nonsense actually finds true fulfillment and peace. You want to go why to the deepest level of the belief in there being separation because there is no separation in truth as we know as I started out by saying in this conversation there's only one thing going on but we don't see that because we we're seeing what we're programmed to see we don't see that love is all there is and there are no exceptions to that rule that I am here like everyone else to know myself in complete fulfillment. So we follow a very clear path that's not mine. I'll have you know, I'm just doing what I learned to do, which is I'm upset. Let us look at everything that, that holds that upset in place because upset isn't real. Upset is the proof of belief. Upset is the effect of the cause, which is the decision. As quantum science says, the answer and the decision, the cause and effect, are one and the same thing. So there is no cause at the level of my family not supporting me here. That's the effect. The upset is the effect. You're free when you go to the level of cause to discover what's the program that's really playing because it's, it's limited. Everything about the human paradigm is not only limiting, 
So humans can only get so far before they realize I've just got to settle for this. This is, I've just got to make the best of this impossible situation as a human. It's only going to get us so far. We're here to, to transcend that. That's where happiness is. Happiness is already the, the fabric of life. Happiness is, is the truth. Peace is the truth. Love is the truth. Everything else is the human dream that is contained by beliefs that we never question because we believe what we see. So, Karen, it's a matter of going deeper to the level of belief about your place in the universe, which is, of course, not easy because we don't have these conversations. That's why we do this work in, in the Life Mastery um, Foundation because everyone needs to know how to do this. It's not a, here you go, here's the formula. I've tried that before. Here, everyone, have all the information and it's, it can't be used because it's the ego is a program. The omni-shambles, remember, is the new word but that stands in opposition to omniscience and omnipresence and omnipotence. The omni shambles of ego is dominant. We, we're so dominated by it. We look out of our eyes and we think, this is real, isn't it? This is real. There's my family. This happened and I'm upset. And so at that level, we think there's some kind of cause effect relationship going on. But it happened way before, before that you agreed to be pissed off and upset with the world. They're just pointing to the program that you're able to, to uncover, which is a program that is of human survival, which is a death wish. So I don't know what would be there, but I can give you some idea. It's the belief that I am, that I deserve to be punished, that I'm completely unforgivable, that I'm broken and wrong at a deep level. I'm just wrong and I should be um, punished, as I said. I'm completely unforgivable, even though we might never have done anything that is worthy of being unforgiven. It's nothing that is superficial and it's nothing that will go away regardless of, of let me just try not to be upset by my family. I'm just trying not to be upset. But the cause of the upset had nothing to do with the family. So we, we go to the upset and we essentially, we come to this point where we've got a decision to make. I either keep seeing the world as I do and believing it, and that's, that's, there's, there's no escaping that. Or I go, right, this is what I know I want, and that is profound happiness, healing, joy, and love. I want to know myself embraced living fulfilled in every moment and so we have to do life differently we can't do life the same way I think Einstein had a bit of wisdom to share about that too didn't he do the same thing over and over again expecting a different result is called chime in insanity insanity Einstein should have written a book of how you play this game of life to be happy there's two gems that we've talked about today that really are, are not to be just discussed over a nice dinner party, but actually actioned. And so we find at the deepest level of every upset, a contract essentially that we've signed for our own death. A contract that agrees with the belief in separation and therefore limitation. So behind every upset, as benign as they might be, and I, I want to acknowledge you and, and um, really commend the courage that you've just demonstrated you have in sharing this, where we might think this is just a silly thing versus, you know, a great big problem. There are no big problems and there are no small problems. All problems are problems. There's nothing more special about this problem than another problem because they all point to the one, the only true one problem that we experience, which is the belief in separation, which is that, that door that is shut that we can open to allow that hero within, to allow God. I realise now how silly it is calling God a hero, but 
you get what I mean, the omniscient truth of love. So behind that upset, Karen, it's, it's looking at the emotions, the stories and the beliefs. And it's shocking and surprising at first. But what becomes, what becomes abundantly clear, as everyone here who's doing this work knows, is that it's the same story that's on repeat. It's the same story, as I was saying. The limitation of humanness is limited in every way. It, it results in the experience of limitation because the paradigm itself is limited. So there's only a set number of of paradigms, if you will, or beliefs that hide the deepest belief in separation so that we can let it go and be free. So this is where we do the self-loving self-inquiry, as we call it, because there's nothing more self-loving than taking the cause of upset out of your experience. Self-love is not a massage on a Saturday afternoon with some hot rocks and some smelly stuff. It really isn't. Has anyone found themselves entirely fulfilled at the end of that experience? beyond the 30 seconds when it's off your body no because it's not that's not self-love that's ego love that's that's accepting the terms of the omni shambles when we've got omniscience just waiting for us to turn and look and say i have a perceptual problem come in love i'm going to keep my mind in love Karen, how did that go? Did that answer, did that help you to, to get this a bit? Yes, I honestly, Salam, I actually did have a bit of a light bulb moment through what you were saying there. I was like, yes, I actually am starting to get what you're talking about. And um, <clears throat> and I do, like, like you were saying, it's, it's going re really deep down within to see what this, it is that's within me that's holding these beliefs, that's creating my upset. Yes, so thank you. Can I just ask one more question? Can we listen? You're, you're recording this. Is there somewhere we can re-listen to it? Dr. Sally Gray on YouTube. Oh, it's on YouTube, is it? Okay, lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for explaining that, Sal. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks, Karen. So for those of you who were listening to that, I think it's really, really valuable. Take that upset, that example. That's, that's exactly the work that sets us free. Whether it's, whether it's I'm upset in this moment because of something like this or, or what's even sneakier from ego's perspective is I, I need to do something to fix a wanting. I want something is not a conversation God has. The truth is present moment fulfillment and you don't need to wait for that in fact waiting for that is actually a decision for ego the omni shambles <laughs> i hope you're enjoying this word as much as i am because it's it's staying so i think that that will that takes us to about an hour you can review these these sessions and the work isn't about just listening to this we all fall, fall for that trap, don't we? It's just lovely to listen to, to people who are uplifting and inspiring. And that's a decision that is part of the dream. You have the capacity to be present moment fulfilled, listening to a voice you actually want to listen to. You don't want to have any human directing you. No human direction required. You've got the infinite mind of love within that you can open up and listen to the infinite mind of love the the supreme teacher not a person there's no person that is that don't get stuck in listening to me or anyone else do the work because that's the only thing that's going to satisfy you because otherwise you're going to be listening you're going to be listening it's a lifetime of listening let me listen to someone Make me feel better for half an hour. No, <laughs> don't listen to me. Find out for yourself the truth of you. So much love. See you next week. <laughs>